Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be having a look at the front forks on the Peugeot Django. Now, I haven't done any videos with the Peugeot uh, as yet. Uh, this is the first time it's actually needed any work doing. Uh, we've got a bit of a weak P, uh, weepy fork seal, so we need to uh, have a look at that. Uh, and obviously, in order to do so, we've got to get the forks off. So, first things first, let's uh, get the front wheel off, get the front end in the air, and uh, have a look at getting the forks out. Okay, before we can get the wheel off, what I'm going to do is remove the front brake caliper, two bolts, and then she'll come off the disc just like so. We can leave it suspended there, it's hanging from two lines, it's not particularly heavy, uh, it's not going to do any harm, um, just being left like that. Okay, next thing we want to do is we need to undo the spindle for the front wheel. 17mm spanner on that side, 19mm socket this side, and just give it a good Yeah, she was pretty tight. Right, there we go. Okay, now what I need to do first before I actually pull the spindle out is just uh, lift the front end up. I'm going to do that uh, by putting a jack under the fuel tank with a with a piece of wood under it and just gently lift the front. Um, it's on the uh, it's on the centre stand. It'll be perfectly solid. Okay, now we've got the front wheel off the ground. It's supported on the jack, and you know it's perfectly uh, it's perfectly adequate for for what we're doing here. It's not going to fall over. Take the nut off and the washer and then slide out the spindle just like so and then what we need to do on this side is just pop the uh, pop the speedo drive off the wheel and then the wheel is out just like so. Okay, right then, what we need to do now is we need to look at getting the mudguard off. Right then, in order to get the mudguard off, um, we need to remove four bolts that are underneath. One there, one there, one there, and one there. Those four bolts off and then the whole plastic mudguard comes out. Now, these have obviously been uh, just above the front wheel, under the mudguard, and have had all the British weather and road grime thrown at them so they are incredibly rusty um, so they may take a little bit of effort to get them out and this first one isn't too bad at the moment it's a bit stiff I've got to be honest but Right, what I'll do, I'll persevere, get these four bolts out, and then I'll bring you back in when we're ready to take the mud guard off. Okay, I've got one more uh, one more bolt to take out of the mud guard, and then it can come out. What we need to do first, in order to be able to get the mud guard down over the forks, is we've got to take the two little brackets off um, on each fork that hold. The, um, this one on this side holds the brake lines, um, basically just there to keep it away from the wheel. And the one on the other side holds the speedo drive. Um, they, bo they both need to come off in order to um, uh, get the mud guard over them um, because they're in the way. Um, and it's a 10mm nut on the inside and a T30 Torx bit 
on the outside. So just whip the nut off and then the, uh, the bolt will be free to come out. Okay, it seems that this is well seized in because it would appear that it's got a bit rusty. So what I need to do is obviously free this off. I'll get this one off and the one on the other side and I'll bring it back in um, and we'll remove the, uh, we'll remove the mudguard. Okay, that's both the brackets off the forks and all I've got now is one more bolt holding the mudguard on. Here's the bolt. Put that down there, and we can manoeuvre the mudguard over the forks, like so. Now, um, what I'll do probably before I put this back on is give it a good clean up inside. Um, it's a bit, uh, a bit manky, uh, but yeah. For now, I'll pop it to one side where it's not going to get damaged. Now, here you can see where we've got the uh, the weeping fork seal. That is a mixture of dirt and fork oil. And you can see there's a misting on both legs. Um, so that's the reason why we're uh, going to this effort. Right then, what we need to do next is we need to undo these two fork clamps. Now, um, in an ideal world, what we would do is we would undo the uh, the top nut on each of the forks prior to removing it from these clamps. We can't do that because Peugeot have kindly put this plastic panel in the way, um, on, which goes over the top of the forks and prevents any access to it. So unfortunately, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to try our best to clamp these forks in a vise or something similar in order to try and get that nut off. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll persevere, we'll struggle on. Um, first off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo these four bolts here, two on each fork and then both the forks will be able to be um, dropped out of this lower yoke. Okay, these bolts are 13 millimeter and they're pretty tight. So I'm gonna use my breaker bar. Oh, yep, they're tight. And the next one. break them all off and then we can get on there with a the ratchet after. Now this one looks to be a little bit slightly rusty and rounded and I don't want to risk rounding that so what I might do with that particular one, in fact this one here looks the same, they're gonna, they look like they're gonna round off so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a six-sided socket on those um, just to err on the side of caution. Okay here we are, uh, 13 mil six-sided socket Hopefully this will uh, get them off without rounding. Um, there we go, yeah, that's perfect. That one's moving. Not a lot of room in here for this a ratchet this big. And again, that's the second one off. Now I can go back to my 12 point, which, which I can fit in here quite easily, and we can wind them out. Right, they don't need to come all the way out, they only need to be loosened. Um, all four just. <coughs> that one didn't actually. Let's try again. Still feels quite tight that one. There we go. That's better. Um, just check the top one. Yeah, they're good. Right. Let's just wind about. And there we go. Right. Now we should be able to get the forks out. Okay, one thing I have discovered is that the top bolt 
has to come all the way out. And there's a groove around the top of the fork and that bolt is actually sat in that groove um, just at the top there. It's just sat in that groove. So if you don't take the bolt all the way out, the fork leg won't come out. Um, here you can see the, uh, the top nut. Uh, quite rusty on there, but um, yeah, that's that's the top note that we do need to try and um, we do need to try and uh, crack off in order to get the forks apart. But we'll have a look at that um, a little bit later. So I need to take the top bolt out on this side. There it is, and there we go. That's as with the other one, it just drops straight out. So yeah, you can see all this gummy, horrible dirt, and that is just four coil. And yeah, that's been weeping for a little while, I think. So yeah, we need to, uh, these are well overdue. Okay, right. Now, one thing I do want to point out with these is that um, Peugeot parts dealers don't actually list a uh, set of seals. For, for this bike. Um, annoyingly, they'll, um, they'll quite happily sell you an entire fork leg like that, but that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and what makes it even more ridiculous is that the, um, the workshop manual for this, for this scooter actually does describe the method by which you replace the fork seals. So it's really, really odd that they tell you how to do it, yet they don't give you the actual parts in order to be able to do it from an official dealer, dealer source. So, that said, I can't find any anywhere else on the internet either. Looking around the internet, all the usual sites like Wimoto and all that good stuff, they don't actually list anything for this. They list them um, for other Peugeot bikes, um, but it's hard to tell whether the forks are the same. So what I need to actually do is pull the fork apart. I need to measure the seal, both the oil seal and the dust seal, make sure I get them uh, the measurements correct. And then what I can do is I can then go on the hunt for, um, for you know, from any bearing or seal supplier really and um, that can give me a, uh, a seal that is the correct size so um obviously i'm going to go for all that hassle for the benefit of anybody else who needs to do this um all you'll have to do is click on the link that i'll put in the description once i've found them um, and then uh, you'll be uh, you'll be all good to go so right next thing i need to do is um try and somehow clamp this in order to get that top nut off okay what we need to do now is we need to crack off these top nuts so these are going to be a pig um because um we need to grip the uh, we need to grip the fork leg in order to get that off and what it'll want to do is spin like so now what i'm going to do is i've taken a uh, length this is a length of um cool, i think it's coolant hose actually um from a car um just a bit of rubber hose um i've cut two lengths off and i've split them down the middle like so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take each one and then kind of like open it up so it's flat on the side of the fork's tension. Same with the other piece. And then I'm going to pop it into the vise like that. And then close the vise up. Make it nice and tight. We should be okay. We won't damage the stanchion. Right. Now, the rubber hose should grip the stanchion in the vise perfectly well. I've got a... This is a 12mm hex um, for the top nut. Let's get that in there. And there we are. Look at that. Beautiful top tip. There we are. That worked. Um, obviously, you could do that for any um, fork. Um, to be perfectly honest, not, not just these ones. So that's one that's um, cracked off. Just need to do the other one. Get them in the face. Close it up. And let's crack this one off. There we go. Absolutely perfect. Right then, what we need to do next is start the disassembly of each fork. And then we can get the seal out and measure it up. 
Right then, now we've got the um, the top nut loose, we can uh, we can crack on with the rest of the fork. What um, the manual actually tells you to do is start at the top end and strip it down from there. However, my uh, pers in my personal experience, you're actually better off um, undoing this bottom nut first whilst the fork is still assembled because it's more than, more likely to actually come out without the damper inside spinning. Uh, it's a six mil Allen and you, you need a fairly long one like that. So what we need to do is clamp this in the vise. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to give it a go um, just with a, uh, just, just like I did with the top nut really. Um, sometimes it can be helpful to spin it out with a, uh, with an impact gun. Yeah, what all it's doing, as you can see, is the tube at the top is turning with it. And that means that the damper assembly, which this is bolted into, is also um, rotating with it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the, the uh, my, my dugger dugger out and just spin it out because the, the shock should free it off. Right then, let's get that in there. What you can sometimes do with a, uh, like a little breaker bar or something, you can shock it sometimes with a mallet just to free it off. Um, that, that, that works, but usually using the old impact gun uh, is an infallible method. There we go. Hopefully that has done the job. Yeah, I reckon we're, uh, I reckon we're good. Okay, I'll do the same on the other one. Right, this has got oil in it. It's not a massive amount. Um, I think it's, I don't even think it's 100 mils um, in these forks. It's a very small amount. And there is a, there is a spring under here. And there it is. Obviously you get to a certain point and it, it'll pop the cap off. All right. And there we go. Right, let me just put that to one side so it doesn't fall over. And then we can get them top nut off the next fork and, there we go. and that's both of them off right what we need to do now is just empty out all the oil into uh, into a suitable container all right then, let's get the oil out. First thing we're gonna take out though is the spring. Pop that down there. And get all the oil out. That's horrible and bloopy. Absolutely bogging. And again, I'll just leave that one there, let it all drain out, and we'll come back to it in a few minutes. Okay, so now we've got all the oil drained out, looking down the fork tube. I can see the damper uh, cartridge down inside there, and believe it or not, inside that damper cartridge is actually a, um, a hex. Uh, it's 10 mil hex. I don't think it's going to show up on the on the video. I think it's a bit too dark. I don't know if it's showing up or not. Um, obviously, I'll I'll show you when we get the uh, damper out. Um, what that means is I can actually use a 10 mil hex um, to hold the damper cartridge still and then get that bolt out. Um, annoyingly, I didn't mention that in the uh, in the official factory manual made by Peugeot, 
Um, obviously, Peugeot manuals aren't uh, aren't all that. Um, that would have been uh, that would have been a nice tip. However, um, you don't have to worry about that because I've just told you. So what I'm going to do is pop the fork leg into the vise, take my 10mm hex with an extension, pop it into the damper rod like so. Take my 6mm for the bolt at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is, uh, there we go. Wind the bolt all the way out. It's actually really nice that they put this 10mm hex in the uh, damper rod. I've not, um, I've not actually come across a, a damper assembly, damper cartridge that's had that facility before. So it's actually quite nice that they've done that. Let's take that off, I don't need that anymore. And just wind this bolt out all the way. My hands are awfully slimy. And there's the bolt removed. There's the tool out. Take the fork leg out. And there is the damper. And there should be a spring. And there it is, there's the little spring. Now, that is all the insides of the fork leg removed. And that little spacer there just sits up in there. Right, that is the, uh, the stanchion completely out. And uh, yeah, it's pretty slimy in there, so that needs a good clean out. Um, Here's a good clean out, it's pretty slimy. So yeah, once you've um, once you've got that bolt out, the, the, the fork basically falls apart. And there's the uh, there's a stanchion that needs a good clean as well because it's um pretty filthy. Um but um worthy of note is there's not really uh there's a couple of little marks on there, but mm, that could drag across a seal, I suppose. I might I might just gently stone that flat. There's a light I can just feel it. Um but they're not terrible. Um, and obviously, if needs be, you could replace them uh, anyway. So what I'm going to do, obviously I need to clean my hands up. I'm going to whip, uh, whip the other fork apart, and then what we can do is get the seals out and have a look at those. Okay, um, now they've got uh, both forks completely disassembled, one thing I do want to mention before we carry on is down there, where the, uh, where the damper rod bolt goes. Um, there is a uh, there is a copper washer down in there that does need to come out so um, I'll get that out and then uh, what we'll do we'll move on to actually uh, pulling the seals out okay there is the uh, there's a copper washer from the bottom of the tube um, what I'll do I'll uh, discard that and I'll put a new one in when I uh, when I reassemble the forks okay right what we need to do next is we need to seals off that's the dust seal um, pretty manky uh, what I'll do is I'll give it a clean up and then I'll give it a measure because um, that's going to be important I need to know the outside diameter and the inside diameter now um, to get the uh, to get the actual oil seal out there is a spring clip just inside and a set of pliers makes light work of it there it is just there that's um pretty rusty so i'll give that a clean as well in fact to be honest with you if i manage to get uh, a seal kit i could probably find one of those uh, in the correct size as well now um to get the oil seal out there should be a case of just levering it out all the way around gently now i do need to measure this so i don't want to damage it beyond recognition. Um, I do need it to actually still look like a seal. Um, it's coming out though, as you can see, we're, uh, we're getting there. These little pry bars are perfect for this kind of thing. Come on. Whoa. and then fire it across the garage right 
there we go there is the seal so what i need to do i need to measure the outside diameter the inside diameter and the overall thickness of this seal and then what i'll do i'll get on the internet have a good look around see what i can find to uh to replace it with so uh, that's probably going to take me a couple of days before i actually get a set of seals so what i'm going to do i'm going to leave all of this for now and then we'll come back once i've uh, got the seals i'll um, tell you all the details about what it is that i find i'll put all the dimensions and everything and what i'll do i'll actually leave links in the description to the parts that i actually buy so um until then i'll um bid you adieu right then guys welcome back um it's been a few days uh since i uh, since i actually stripped these forks apart and I last saw you, but obviously by the magic of YouTube, um, for you guys, it's uh, a couple of seconds. So what I've done, I've done a bit of research around the internet, trying to find um, a set of fork seals for this uh, for this Peugeot Django. And I've got some good news and some bad news. Good news is, I've got a set of oil seals. Um, when I uh, when I actually took them off the uh, off the bike and took them out of the forks and, and give them a good clean, I could actually see that the uh, the measurement of the for uh, the seal is on the, on, printed on the outside of the seal, as it is with most seals to be fair, uh, but I wasn't 100% sure until I cleaned them um, that it was gonna be there. And the measurements for these is um, 32, 43, 10.3. So that's 32 inside diameter, 43 outside diameter, and 10.3 height or width, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so I, I had a little bit of a look around. I um, spoke to a few different suppliers and um, I came up with uh, this set of seals here. These are made by Athena, which are a really, really good brand. They make a lot of different um, uh, motor, motor components. Um, in fact, the, the uh, head gasket in my E36 BMW is an Athena head gasket, which is a Cooper ring gasket with the separate firings. And it's an excellent piece of kit. Um, the only thing that differs ever so slightly on these is Whilst they're 32 inside, 43 outside, they're actually 10.5 mil thick. So they're 0.2 of a millimeter thicker than the stock ones. Put them next to each other, can you see it? No, and it won't make any difference whatsoever. So they're, um, so they're good to go, I'm happy with that. Right, next thing we wanna look at is dust seals. Right then, dust seals. This is where I came uh, a little bit unstuck. I couldn't find any. Anywhere, everywhere I looked, I went to several suppliers, uh, bearing and uh, seal suppliers, you know, people that specialise in this sort of thing, and they could not find a dust seal in 32, 43, 14.5. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. 32, 43, 14.5 on the inside there. Hopefully that will show up on the camera. If not, take my word for it. But yeah, I couldn't find any. No matter where I went, they all said, uh, in fact, several of them said, are you sure you got those measurements right? Um, and I sent them photographs and everything and they all came back and said sorry I don't know where on earth Peugeot sourced these from but they they couldn't get me any now from a personal perspective I actually think that's a bit of a blight on uh, on Peugeot because that, that 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 scooter is six years old and if you can't get replacement parts for a six-year-old scooter direct from the person uh, from the company should I say that made the bike um, then that's uh, that's pretty pretty sorry uh, in my opinion obviously um, they will however sell you a full complete fork leg which is nothing short of laughable um, for, for the sake of a for the sake of a four pound um, dust seal they expect you to buy a full leg absolutely not going to happen so to that end um, th these are actually not damaged in any way so what I've done is I've given them a good clean up and I'm going to reuse them um, is that ideal absolutely not would I would I rather have replaced them? Absolutely, but I don't have an option. So I'm going to have to reuse these um, in order to pee, put the bike back together again. Um, so we've got brand new oil seals, and we're going to have to reuse the dust seals. Um, I know people do this um, from time to time for, from an economic point of view, just to save a few quid. But me personally, I would have preferred to have replaced them. But in this instance, I'm not going to be able to. One thing I will say though is I'm going to continue my search because there's got to be some somewhere. The um, the uh, company that made these is a company called RFX. I even went to their website um, and asked them the question, but they didn't actually get back to me, which is annoying. So I'm going to keep pressing them. Um, they they make them. It's printed on the inside of the uh, seal. Um, so I'll keep trying. Um, and the beauty of these forks is, in order to replace the dust seal, I don't actually have to disassemble the forks 
um, all I'd need to do is drop the fork out of the bike and then I can pop it off, slide it over the top of the fork and then put the new one on and, and, and then we should be good. Um, so yeah, I'll keep trying. Uh, if anybody, however, does know of a good supplier of these that I haven't been able to find, then by all means, put that in the comments and um, you will be um, at the top of my gratitude list. Um, anyway, enough of the waffle. Let's, um, let's crack on with uh, reassembling these forks. Okay then, let's, um, let's begin by putting these back together. I'm going to do it slightly unconventionally because I just think it's an easier method than what it would describe in the, uh, in the manual. And I'm going to start by actually fitting the fork seal to the, uh, to the fork leg. Now, normally what you would do is you would fit what they, what they nickname a condom over the top of that and then you would slide the fork over, bring it down and then you, you're all good. And the, the idea of this condom, I don't actually know what they're really called to be fair, I've always referred to them as that. But the idea of them is that it stops the um, inside of the seal getting torn by any nicks or anything uh, at the top of the fork. Um, but with these, they're actually, they actually cone in ever so slightly. They, they, I don't know if you can see that, they actually do come in. Um, and so what we can do is we can actually fit the oil seal into the fork and then we, we'll be able to fit it like that um, without any problems whatsoever. So that's what I'm going to do, um, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to use plenty of red rubber grease anyway, so it should, um, it should slide together perfectly fine. So what I'll do, I'll get the, I'll get the first of the seals out, get me red rubber grease. Just a little dab all the way around. I need to go mental with it. Just pop a little bit over there. Right, fit that into the top of the fork leg like so. And then what we're going to do is push it down. And I'm going to need a uh, driver in order to fit it right to the bottom of its recess. So what um, what I would traditionally use for uh, for fork seals is a, is a a bearing driver. I actually have a fork seal. Sorry, not a bearing driver, a bush driver. Um, um, seal driver, should I say, fork seal driver. I've actually got one of those, which is adjustable, but I'm not going to use it in this instance because not everyone has one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to show you a very simple method by which to drive these in, which you know is is, is foolproof and anybody can do with a simple socket set. So let me go and grab some, and then we'll um, we'll get started. Okay, what I've got here is a large socket. This particular one's a 30 mil, but it doesn't really matter as long as it fits around the outside circumference of the of the seal. Um, don't really want to drive onto this bit. You want to drive onto the outside. Um, and then what we're going to do is literally drive it down. There we go. You can hear the sound change as it gets to the as it bottoms out. You you just hear a change in the note, so um, you know you know that it's all the way in. So yeah, so there we are. Right. Next thing, what we need to do is fit the spring clip. Um, it's got a bit of corrosion on it, but I've cleaned it up best I can. Um, I didn't buy a new one because it is perfectly serviceable. It just looks a bit tatty, um, but it'll be fine. Pop it in until it sits in the groove just like so and then that is where we are um, at the present um, what we need to do next is put all of these parts into the fork uh, stanchion and then assemble them to the fork leg the dust seal we will put on last um, what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna just to ensure it's nice and lubed I'm just gonna use a little bit more red rubber grease on the inside of the seal and we're good to go Okay, let's um, let's have a look at the components that are going to go back into the fork stanchion and whip them together. Right then, fork stanchion. What I've done is I've um, looked at any uh, any nicks that were on the actual leg, and what I've done is I've finally um, stoned them um, with an oil stone just to just to take them down so that they don't nick any of the seal. However, these bits up here, um, these little rust patches, I'm not too concerned about. They're they're where the um, the actual, uh, I want to call it a triple clamp, but I suppose it's a lower yoke, I guess, on this um, actually clamp. So they're not going to be anywhere near the sliding. Um, you know, they're not going to slide through the seal, so I'm not concerned about those. So we'll, uh, we won't be worried about them. So what we need to do is we need to put this together. So what we've got here, they call this, I think they call it a, I can't remember what they call it in the book now. It's something stupid, but it's basically like a damper rod. Uh, all these little oil ways allow oil out um, and, 
obviously the, the size of the, the holes is what determines its rate so it's it's pretty simple this it's not like a normal damper cartridge it's um pretty antiquated but yeah it is what it is um it's only a cheap little moped so yeah anyway so spring what we'll do drop that in there and it drops through that hole on the end of here we've got this little this little stopper here and that is um, everything that goes inside there for now what we do next is fit it I'll try and do it the other way around so you can see see a seal in there we'll fit it in slide it into the seal gently and push it all the way down push it all the way down and we should have through the hole we should be able to see all the way through and we can see where the little bolt is going to go in the bottom of the fork leg so if i drop that down there for a second what i'll do next is i'll show you the little uh, copper washer this is brand spanking new here's the old one here that's the old one which i'm throwing away you can reuse them um people say you can't you can if you anneal it um it'll be good as new um and it'll be softened and then it'll work harder in uh, as you're tying it down um but i've got plenty of spares so i'm gonna use a new one um and uh, yeah we'll be good to go right then what i need now is i need to get some uh, get some sockets out and various other tools um and then what we'll do we'll get this bolt in get it in the end of the stanchion and then what we'll have to do is clamp the stanchion into the vice um using our little rubber rubber uh, hose trick um and then we should be able to get it all tightened up okay so i've got some tools out what we need to do is um i need to hold the uh, damper in position so i can get this bolt in you recall from when i disassembled it there was actually a hex hole in the top of there it's 10 mil um, and that fits in there perfectly so what i'm going to do is drop that in just like that with a ratchet pop the fork leg into the vise and then we get our bolt with our 6mm hex and that screws in like that you'll get to a point where the damper will start to turn like now you can see the tools turning in my hand over here that's because it's up to touch now what we need to do next is we need to hold this damper still and torque it up now the torque setting let me just check the manual quickly the torque setting is 25 newton meters so let me set the torque wrench to 25 newton meters like so right pop that off there like that. that's that's a lot easier Check it's not spinning. Yep, we're all good. Right, here we go. We can fit it tightening now. And there we go. 25 newton meters. Take the tools out. And there we are. That is the fork leg back together up to the point where we need to put some oil in so yes the um the uh the copper washer in the bottom obviously seals it stop the oil draining out because if it's um if it if it drains out then you're not going to have any damping whatsoever um other than the um yeah yeah you, well you won't have any damping whatsoever there'd be nothing it will literally bounce all over the shop so um on the spring so yeah we'll um what we need to do next is look at getting some oil inside 
So let me uh, let me look in the manual, look at the specs, see how much we need, and then we'll um, we'll look at filling her up. Right then, four coil. The manual specifies ten weight. Um, so that's what I've got. I've got bottles of this stuff lying around all over the place because um, ten weight is what I use in all my bikes. To be fair. Um, now what the what the manual does say it specifies um, ninety two milliliters, which sounds like a piddly amount, but that's what the book says. Um, 0 0.092 um, of, uh, of a litre, so 92 millilitres. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put 100 millilitres in because I've got a jug which goes, which shows 100 millilitres. I don't have a jug that says 92 and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not going to get it that accurate. Um, most um, most forks, when, you, when it comes to putting oil in, actually specify an air gap as well as the amount of oil. Um, the amount of oil generally I just use to make sure you buy the right amount uh, and then what I'll do is I'll set the air gap using an air gapping tool um, That is a much more accurate way of doing it and is the way I prefer um, However, they don't give you an air gap in the uh, in the Peugeot manual. They literally just tell you to put 92 millilitres of oil in So I'm gonna stick a hundred in um, it's gonna be slightly over. It's not gonna make a dramatic difference however, what it will do is um, it will affect the, um, the, the the compression ever so slightly, but that's not going to be a bad thing because if I'm riding it, I'm a, I'm a fairly hefty guy anyway. So, um, yeah, it, it, a smaller air gap means that the air is less compressible than it would be with a with a slightly larger air gap. Well, that's my understanding of it anyway. I am not uh, an expert in um, suspension setup or air gaps, types of oil or anything like that, and I don't profess to be. Uh, if you want to if you want to learn all about that stuff, check out Dave Moss uh, Dave Moss Tuning. Um, that that the knowledge that that guy's got about suspension and suspension setup is absolutely unbelievable and the guy's probably forgotten more um than i will ever know about uh, you know about tuning suspension so yeah go and check him out uh, if you want to uh, if you want to know about that um so yeah as i said i'm going to put 100 mils in and um and be done with it so let's um let's measure out 100 mils into uh into the jug that i've stolen from the kitchen much to my wife's dismay um Now, one thing I will say about this, that another reason why I don't like to measure it out is because, although I'm going to put 100 mils in, you probably end up leaving a couple of mil of the inside of the jug when you pour it out. Um, so it's not it's not the most accurate method by which to fill your fill your fork with oil. So that is all the oil that goes in it. But if you recall, when I uh, when I emptied the horrible gunju oil out, there wasn't that much in the bottom of that drip tray between both forks. Um, it barely covered the uh, bottom of the drip tray. Um, but that said, obviously, the fork seals were leaking, so some of it's probably come out. So, all we need to do now is tip this into the fork. Coming up the fork stanchion, there's bubbles coming out. The lever will drop slightly. Yeah, there is bubbles popping up inside. Get as much of this out of this jug as I can. As I said, there's going to be a little bit left in the jug, probably a couple of mil or so. Right, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pump the fork. That way it goes all the way through the damper as well. You can hear the noise it's making. You can feel there's a bit of resistance as the oil is going through the damper rod. And then what we need to do, just make sure that there's nothing leaking out the bottom, which looks good. And there we go. Right. Happy with that. Right. Next thing we need to do is drop the spring in. The spring doesn't matter which way around it goes. It's the same either way. Um, Obviously, uh, it, it literally doesn't matter which way around you put a spring, the spring will still operate in the same manner. And it's just, the same goes to uh, progressive springs as well. Progressive springs that are, 
wound the same and then they, they, they tend to tighten up at one end. It literally doesn't matter which way up you put progressive springs. They still, the spring doesn't know which way up it is. It still operates in exactly the same way. Right, now we've got that in. We need to put our cap on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of red rubber grease just around the seal. Um, I did inspect this seal just to make sure that it was um, okay. Uh, if obviously it looks like it's damaged or torn in any way or misshapen then just pop a new one on. I have got spares, but I didn't see the need to uh, replace it. It looks in perfectly work, good working order. So let's pop this down and get it started. And there we are, we've got that all down, all the way to touch. Nice. Right, what I do need to do next is obviously refit my dust, my, uh, my dust seal. As I said before, there's absolutely no need to, um, to put this on before the forks are assembled. And likewise, if I do come across, uh, you know, a replacement one, it'll be perfectly uh, easy to replace without without disassembling the forks. Um, I'm not too concerned about the fact I went over that little bit of corrosion there. It is only the dust seal after all. It's just there to keep the crap out of the oil seal. It's not um, It's not a life changer if it uh, isn't sealing so well because it's not there to seal against oil. It's there to seal against dust. So uh, yeah, there we are. Right, what I do need to do is just torque the top cap up. So I need to use my, um, my little hose trick um, in the vise and then get that torqued up. So let me go get the torque wrench out again and we'll get that nipped. Okay, got the fork in the uh, in the vise with my little bits of rubber hose gripping it nice and tight. And what I'm going to do, just tighten her up 28 newton meters for this one. So it's not that tight. Um, you probably you probably get away with holding that for 28 newton meters. To be perfectly honest, it's uh, not that tight at all. Let's get that out. And pop her out the vise. Give me two bits of hose to one side. And there we go. That is one fork rebuilt with a brand new, uh, brand new oil seal in it. Hopefully, that'll um, that'll be the end of it, and um, she'll be good and won't leak oil um, all over the place. We've got no leaks at the bottom. We're all good. So yeah, happy with that. That's one. Obviously what I need to do next is reassemble the other one. I'm not going to uh, do it twice on video, there's absolutely no point, it's exactly the same as this one. The only difference is obviously the fork leg's different because it doesn't have the bracket for the caliper, the brake caliper, but um, the actual process of reassembly is exactly the same in every way. So what I'll do, I'll do that, get that back together, and then we'll bring it back in when um, both forks are back together, ready to go on the bike, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll sort that out. Right then, so there we are. That is both forks reassembled and nice. Same with that one. All good. Right. What we need to do next is obviously mount them onto the bike. Now, as I mentioned before, this little notch here, the top bolt of the two, there's two bolts that clamp this fork onto the onto the lower yoke. Um, the top bolt of the two actually engage is slightly inboard. I don't know if you'll notice it at all, but it is slightly inboard of the of the lower of the two bolts, and it actually engages in this slot. So you you can't get the you can't you know you can't put one in and then get the other one not at the same height. They they will both fit in at the same height because that bolt engages with this slot. So the top bolt has to come all the way out, otherwise you won't be able to get the fork leg in. Um, and then what we'll do, we'll put them back in and then torque them up. Now the, the, the two bolts on the yoke are also 28 newton meters, so I've got my torque wrench over there. So uh, yeah, let's, um, let's get the forks back on the bike. Right then, so here we are. So as I said before, the lower of the two bolts isn't quite in as far as the, uh, the top one. The top one is slightly closer towards the opening for the fork, uh, hence the reason why that one engages with the um, the slot on the top of the fork stanchion. So let's get that one out. Get this one out as well. We'll get a lot of crud under here, obviously from thrown up by the road and being made of mild steel, it does corrode quite a lot. What I might do at some point is take this off, throw it in a bucket of um, deoxy and then give it a paint. I reckon that'll probably do it uh, 
a world of good. The lower of the two bolts don't actually have to come all the way out, to be fair, they, uh, they're fine as they are. Right, so the two forks then. Obviously, the brake caliper one goes on this side and the one without the brake caliper goes this side. So let me get it in. Fit the bolt. Obviously, if the bolt isn't going in, then the fork is in the wrong place. And there we are. That's one out. Same for this side. You get a good indicator from the rust mark on the actual stanchions as to where they're where they're actually supposed to sit. To be uh, to be fair, so it's not too difficult. And again, that one's in as well. So let me pop these ones back in. Right then, these four bolts are all done up to 28 Newton meters, which is exactly the same as the top cap on the forks. So handily my torque wrench is already at the correct um, setting. And these are 13 mil, 13 mil bolts. So I've got the 13 mil socket here. What I'm gonna do first is just get them all up to touch. them all up to touch right now let's grab the torque wrench set to 28 newton meters and we'll do the top ones first and then the bottom one yeah there those bolts have definitely seen better days i might actually get some new ones and replace them okay so that is the forks fitted back to the bike what we need to do next is fit the mudguard so let me go and grab it and then we'll uh, we'll get that on okay here's the mudguard obviously as you recall from when i took it off it's held in with these uh, these four points here with these four little screws onto these four points just here now what we need to do in order to uh get it on the bike if we turn that fork leg in so that the brake caliper mounting doesn't interfere and then the caliper itself and the speedo drive also go inside you can see these two channels here at the back of the mudguard that's where they that's where they they live um let me turn that back again and then there we go we slide it straight back up and into position now what i'm going to do i'm going to lie down i've neatly got a little kneeling pad here um, so I'm not lying down on the cold garage floor. And then it's a case of just fitting the four, four little bolts. These are 10 mil. Just pop them all in. Them all in first and then what I'll do, I'll grab me ratchet which I've got right here and then I can tighten them all up and that's four and there we go that is a mudguard refitted so what we need to do next get the wheel in with its spindle then we come out the caliper and obviously we need to uh, make sure that we get the speedo drive in as we uh, as we mount the wheel in the spindle. So yeah, let me uh, also go and check the torque settings for both the spindle and the um, caliper in the manual, and then uh, we can refit both of those. Right then, here is the wheel. Put the spindle back through it. What I'm going to do? Just rip it apart again. And then the washer, pull the spindle out. Make sure that the 
space is still there. They're actually captive, it, should, it should, doesn't actually come out, so it should uh, should be in place. If it's not, then uh, I'd go look around your garage to find it. Now, what we need to do is pop the speedo drive on onto the wheel here. Um, as you can see, what it does is, as it as the wheel turns, it spins, drives a speedo, but it, it needs to engage on these two little lugs here. If it doesn't, then it won't operate correctly. Um, so, just pop it in position, let me get it in the right place, there like that, and then lift the wheel, making sure that the space, oop, make sure the spacer is engaged, it's kind of an awkward job that you could really use several hands for, um, but once it's in place it'll be fine, and there we go. So, what we need to do now, feed the spindle through, all the way through, making sure that the speedo drive is engaged correctly, and there we go. And there we are, that's the spindle through. Bit of an awkward one. It's not the heaviest of wheels, it's just the fact that you could probably do with three hands. Don't forget the washer, and then, the nut goes on just like so. Okay. Right then, what we need to do is we need to tighten it up. And it is done to 65 Newton meters. So I've got a big, bigger torque wrench because the smaller one I normally use only goes up to 60. And there we go. So holding it with one ratchet, And there we go, 65 newton meters, job done. Right, next thing we wanna do is we wanna get the brake caliper back up mounted to the fork leg. What we need to do, just gently feed it over, feed it over the disc, making sure that the pads go either side of the disc, because it is possible to for, for both the pads to sit on one side. Um, just be mindful of that. And there we go, right, what I've done, these, um, these bolts do require Loctite, but prior fitment. So I've got a little bit of uh, medium, medium strength thread locker. Um, don't go crazy with this stuff, but what I did beforehand is I did clean off all of the, uh, all of the old stuff just to remove it. Cause you don't want the old stuff on there as well. You do want to get rid of it. Come on, what's going off here? Uh, it's it's gone very very gloopy. It is extremely cold in my garage. Um, it is actually snowing outside, so that could be the reason why it's not coming out like it should do. So there's a bit of thread locker on there. Get her in. Just tighten her up. Same with this one. I'm just what I've done. I've just whipped the lid off, and then I'm dipping the bolt in. And again, there we go. Doesn't it doesn't need too much. A uh, little double do yet, as they say. go that's up to touch and these are 30 newton meters oops let's get the right let's get the right socket on there i think they're what size are they what size is that one 13 they're not 13 that is an 11 here it is I've got the 12 there we go got the correct socket had it out all along 12 newton meters, uh, sorry, 12 mil up to 30 newton meters. Just one. And two. Oh, let's get the lid on that before it falls over again. Yeah, it's all gone, it's all gone gloopy and thick. But yeah, I reckon that's uh, caused by the cold, so mm. weird. Okay, so last thing I need to do is these little brackets here just need fitting back on to the fork leg and they just go on there like so 
So what I'll do, put that one on, and fit it in like that, get the nut on the inside. It's just a little 10 mil nut. It's quite awkward to get in with the wheel in the way. I think when I took them off, I actually did it with the wheel off. However, there we go. Let me get the spanner on the inside. There we are, right. One, same on this side for the speedo drive. And there we go, make sure the wheel spins, and she does, perfectly fine. Right, what I need to do next is just lower it down, and that is the job, jobbed. So let me drop it off the jack, and put it back on the stand. And there we go. That is the job done and nice and nice and boingy at the front. So there we are. That is the fork seals replaced on the Peugeot Django 125. Obviously the 50, uh, the 125 and the 150 will be um, exactly the same. Um, but yeah, so it's unfortunate that I couldn't find any um, dust seals and I'm very, very annoyed really with Peugeot for not supplying them. Um, anyway, obviously if anybody does come across a set, then by all means, give me, uh, give me a shout in the comments and um, I will uh, obviously let everybody else know and um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll keep these little bikes running for uh, some, you know, some, some time to come. Um, what I'll do, all the parts that I did buy, you know, the oil, the seals, etc. Um, I'll, I'll link them in the description so that you can go and uh, go and find them yourself um, and yeah that that is the job done so hopefully you uh, you know you, you find you enjoyed this video you, you found it useful um, I'm probably gonna do a few more with the Django um, it's probably due a service um, anytime now it's been a little while since I last serviced it so it's due one so I'll probably do a video on that um, yeah and anything else that we do with it um, I'll, uh, I'll you know I'll um, I'll film it so that you can uh, you can you can see this is the first one obviously that I've done with the Django but the first of many hopefully anyway guys thank you very much for uh, for watching and I will see you all again for the next video take care bye bye now <laughs> <laughs>